What's going on everybody? You have Tone here, the coach of your Miami Mallon Marlins, and I am here bringing you guys my draft recap for season number two of the PCL. And before I go any further, I just want to say that if you guys did enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, hit that subscribe button, all that good stuff. So, with all that out of the way, I'm just going to try to make this as brief as I possibly can, but try to go into as much detail as I can, trying to um, do the best of both worlds there. But anyway, the PCL is a league where it follows some some aspects like the GBA where it is a tiered draft so you have your so the draft format just goes as you pick your tier 1, tier 2, two tier 3's, a tier 4, tier 5 mega and then you get 400 points for four extra Pokemon but it's a little bit different with the PCL as the PCO decided that some Pokemon that normally don't see usage in the Draft League format are going to get some use here as they did allow some Pokemon that are either like Ubers from a small gun perspective or Pokemon that are just too overpowered to even consider using in Draft League format such as Magearna. With that being said, the PCO did put these Pokemon into something called an S tier. And the same thing applies to some Megas that are also in their own S Mega tier, where if you draft an S tier Mega, you can't draft an S tier Pokemon to go along with it. So, for example, um, stuff like Mega Metagross is allowed in this league, but if you draft Mega Metagross, you can't go and grab something like Magirna or Tapu Lele that's also allowed to go along with it, so you can't have one and have the other at the same time because that would just be too too annoyingly broken. Even to the point where even Zygarde Complete, uh, yeah, Zygarde 100% is in this league, and if you draft Zygarde Complete, it is counts as your Mega Pokemon, which is understandable thinking about it because dealing with Zygarde 100% plus having to deal with a Mega on top of that that's a bit annoying to deal with on the whole. So, with that out of the way, I'm just going to jump right into the draft recap and see what we picked up for Season 2 of the PCL. So, seeing as though that some Pokemon that normally don't see competition from a Drive League standpoint are going to make their appearance in this league, I figured this is my best opportunity to try out some of these Pokemon that you never get to see used by people. Whether it be too broken, too matchup reliant, too overpowered, whatever the case may be. I decided that I'm going to try to get something like that in my with my round one pick. And considering that I had the fifth pick in the draft, I knew for a fact I was getting something good with that draft spot. And to be honest, everyone in the draft got something amazing with their round one pick. Even round two and even go as far as round number three you get something very, very solid for your draft. So it's hard to really say that there's a bad team. It's only A team's only as good as the person that's using it, obviously. But uh, with that out of the way, I figured with my fifth pick, whatever was not taken with the first four picks, I had my free reign to get whatever was available at my disposal. And considering what was left... I pretty much had a difficult choice to make because I know that when I pick one of these Pokemon, whatever goes with it won't come back to me unless by some miracle it's still there, which I'll get into as I go along with my draft. So I decided to start my draft off with something that has seen some use in some competitive leagues, whether it be Uber or otherwise or... Um, unbanned. Um, more recently, I, I know I had to f I fought one of these, this Pokemon back in the PTL a while back. Um, and this Pokemon kind of um, gives the issue of creating 50-50s quite a lot um, because of its moves. And I kind of gave away what that Pokemon is in regards to what I'm talking about here. And I figured it was a good starting foundation for my draft. So. With my round one pick, number five overall, I decided to pick up Aegislash. So, like I said, it's not every day you're going to see Aegislash used in draft league format. And when I had the ability to take Aegislash, I jumped 
at the opportunity. Like, like just be real. Like, having something like H slash at my disposal, like Steel Ghost typing, is a phenomenal, phenomenal def um, typing, giving you a normal immunity, a fighting immunity, and a poison immunity all in one. <coughs> Not to mention the fact that having the ability to go from defense to offense so remotely quick in one turn at that, and then go from offense to defense with King's Shield, have the ability to eat up a hit, switch to blade form thanks to stance change, and then fire off a stab, shadow ball, flash cannon, iron head from a base 150 attack or 150 special attack, and then having um, its defenses go to 150 defense and 150 special defense in shield form, well, like you see in the picture, is just phenomenal. And not to mention the fact that it has so many um, other uses of so many sets at its disposal, whether it be sword stance, whether it be like a subtoxic set, autonomize. Like, I'm just scratching the surface here. Like, like just thinking about all the potential sets I can bring with H Slash, it's just going to be so amazing. And, more or less, this, I kind of didn't build the drafts around, my draft around H Slash, but having H Slash function the role I want it to be, mainly having something that can come in, take hits, and threaten something out with the potential of... Like I said, Shadow Ball, Flash Cannon, Sacred Sword, Iron Head, and then have the bulk to get up a Sword Stance or an Autonomize, wherever the case may be, live a hit, go into Blade form, and then f and then just nuke something off that base 150 attack or special attack stat, not to mention to pick off weakened opponents with some priority and Shadow thing, and that's one of the main things... That, my, that most of my drafts usually lack is some lack of strong priority. And having something like Aegis Slash to bend that gives me something like Shadow Sneak is just phenomenal. So, yeah, really, really happy that I got Aegis Slash with my first round pick. It's going to be a lot of fun to try to build with this thing and hopefully put in some work with my um, with Aegis Slash here. Not going to lie, it's going to be... I'm, I'm like grinning from ear to ear with this pick and... Uh, that's pretty much all I want to say in that regards because, like I say, Ace Slash is, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, some people might say it's easy to exploit because of King's Shield, because it can be played around, because King's Shield doesn't block um, status moves or whatnot. But more often than not, it's not really going to matter because the fact that it's Steel type, it can't be toxic unless you're facing a Salazzle or it's like a different typing by Soak. And more often than not, I'm you're not unless it's a phys, unless I'm running physical Aegis slash being burnt isn't gonna um isn't gonna bother me either. So uh, nothing much else to say about that. But yeah, Aegis slash is gonna be a lot of fun to try to use in this league. So moving on to my round number two pick, there was a lot of options still available with round two, and there's a lot of stuff I wanted to pair with Aegis slash that just looks so good on paper. That I really wanted to try out. I had like, f like I don't think like three options at my disposal. So the first thing I wanted to do was actually try to go after Megalopony. Like A slash Megalopony just sounded like an amazing thing to try out. But unfortunately, Megalopony got taken two picks before my round two pick, which sucked. Then my second option was to go after Garchomp, and that got taken before Megalopony. And then my third option was to grab Zygarde 50%. And unfortunately, that got taken the pick right before mine. And I was just like, oh man, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna try to use any of these. I like I really wanted to try out these mods in in com in combination with Age of Slash. I really wanted to use them so so badly, but you can't have everything in life, so I'm not really gonna stress out about what I didn't, about what I wasn't able to get. But I am happy about what I was able to get with my round two pick. So instead of looking for like some offensive um, threat that would benefit Aegis Slash, the next best thing was, well, might as well try to find a complete my Dragon Fairy Steel Core with some other options, and I might as well get my Fairy type now because all my primary options were off the table. So, what better way to 
complete two thirds of the Dragon Fairy Steel Core, then to get, uh, let's say, one of the best, or if not the, well, to some comparison, the best fairy type in Draft League format, well, for me at the very least, and it's everyone's favorite pink blob that I always love to use. Had to be Clefable. It just had to be Clef. <laughs> like, were you honestly expecting any different? Like, it's me. If it's not a Clefable, it's a Ferrothorn. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> but, all jokes aside, like, getting Clefable to pair with Age of Slash is just so, so phenomenal. Like, having its weaknesses, Poison and Steel, covered by Age of Slash, and on top of that, um... Uh, Ace Clefable provides Ace Slash with so much in terms of one slot. Being able to um, pass wishes into Ace Slash as a last recovery, provide Teal Bell support in case it gets burnt. Not to mention that Clefable can self sustain itself on any given in any given match as it gets access to Soft Boiled. It can be a Stealth Rocker, it can be a Calm Mind user. Uh, getting access to unaware to stop setup sweepers like it just has the perfect combination of everything you want in terms of utility and in one Pokemon and me passing over Clef was like a big no-no and just Clef plus H just looks amazing from a typing standpoint like I can arguably check like a good portion of well not a good portion but a, a good majority of Pokemon depending on depending on the matchup here, but just it's just so phenomenal. Like it's amazing. Like it's really much more there's no much more I could say about Clef that hasn't already been said, especially considering with how many times I've drafted and used Clefable in the past. It's just a phenomenal Pokemon to have on any given team if you're able to use it. If you're able to use it properly. And having Clef with AG is just just sounds like a phenomenal pairing, not gonna lie. So, so with that out of the way, uh, with the combination of Clef plus Aegis Slash, there were a few things, a few notable things that did kind of annoy me with the pairing, and the, well, the primary one was, like, I did have ways of dealing with Steel types. I had, um, like, Clefable does get uh, Flamethrower and Fire Blast, Aegis Slash gets Sacred Sword, but... Uh, steel types in general can be a little bit annoying, more primarily Heatran, if I have to fight one. Like, if, I have, if I ever have to go up against something like a Heatran or some annoying steel type that my Aegis Slash or my Cl or Clef, obviously, doesn't want to deal with, I want to have something that can at least check those steel type Pokemon. And looking at what was available when it came back to me for my round 3 pick, uh, the main thing I wanted to go after was, at first, I was trying to complete my Dragon Fairy Steel Core right away, but I figured I could wait an extra round to complete that core, because there was one Pokemon that stood out to me that I really wanted, not really that, not, not that I really wanted to get, but it's something that did alleviate the pressure in terms of, um, Clefable and Aegis Slash having to worry about Steel types, and at the same time, it gave me a Wall Breaker all-in-one. So, with my round 3 pick, it's been my go-to mon for the last couple of leagues that you've seen me use it in, and that Pokemon just so happened to me, Mega Gallade. So, <laughs> so imagine my surprise, I'm using Mega Gallade again, even though when I told myself I was going to give Mega Gallade a break. Um, and more no most notably, you see me use Mega Gallade in the IBL, you see me use Clefable in the IBL, so it's essentially, it's like I'm drafting my IBL team all over again. It wasn't my intention because, like I said, I wanted Mega Lopunny as my fighting type, and even Mega Medicham got taken round one. So, the next, be the third best option for fighting type was to get Mega Gallade. And while not everyone got their Megas immediately, but I couldn't really pass up the fact that Mega Gallade does provide my team with an immediate wall breaker and amazing bulk. Um, amazing setup mon, like, I've I've used it multiple times to know how it functions, even though most of the time you see me use it as like a bulk up 3 attack set with some crazy bulk for whatever reason. Um, I am trying to, ex like, use it more of in a wall breaker set as opposed to like a bulky offensive set. Um, as a team is shaping up to be bulky offensive anyway, but 
Mega Galay is just a great mon. Like, there's really not more you can say about it. Like, being Sword Stance, Bulk Up, other acts, also getting access to stuff like Will O Wisp, Destiny Bond, the list goes on and on. Being a Taunter. And it's not every it's not every game where you need to bring um, psychic coverage. Like close combat or drain punch is mostly enough, and then whatever two extra coverage moves you need for Mega Gallade, it can work if it, if the matchup favors those coverage options. There's more of a situation where you don't even need to click um, Zen Headbutt or bring psychic coverage unless you desperately need it. So more often than not. Uh, <laughs> Again, nothing really much else to say about uh, a self-explanatory Pokemon like Mega Gallade. It's been a Mega on the rise for the last year or so. It has really gained traction. Base 110 speed's amazing. Base 165 attack, phenomenal. Having solid base special 115 special defense. Um, 95 defense is um, helped out by the fact that he gets access to bulk ups to take those hits a little bit better. And the low base HP doesn't really matter as much, especially considering that you can make it as bulky as you want. It can run bulk up and then get back most of that um, damage it takes with Drain Punch. So it doesn't have to worry about self-sustaining, about relying on Clefable to wish itself to go for Wish and then switch out into Mega Glade to heal itself up. But it does help out to have like Heal Ball support in the back. So... Just a phenomenal Pokemon to pair with AG and Clef and Mega Gallade. Like <laughs> I said, like I said, I wanted to give Mega Gallade a break, but when when the team came up, uh, <laughs> just couldn't pass it up. You know, just I just couldn't. <laughs> I tried. Believe me, I tried to pass it up, but I couldn't. So at this point, I decided now would be the best time to try to um complete my Dragon Fairy Steel Core, but at the same time, now that I have Mega Gallade again, I kind of want to fix that, um, that main concept of, of having Mega Gallade paired with a bulky Steel type plus a strong Dark type to deal with those bulky Psychics that Mega Gallade does struggle with. And while I do have Aegis Slash for Psychic types, I want to have a fallback option and give myself a Psychic Immunity. So I was going to go after a dark type this this round. Unfortunately, the main the main dark type I want to get for round four was Hydreigon. However, Hydreigon was taken like the same round I wanted to get Hydreigon in. So I had to change up my strategy a bit. Hydreigon would have been phenomenal because it would have been able to complete my Dragon Fairy Steel Core, and it gave me a strong dark type all in one with momentum. Uh, the other option I had to fill out for my dark type was uh, Mandibuzz, but Mandibuzz was taking the pick right before mine as well. So yeah, double snipe, well, what can you do? So what I ended up doing was grabbing a dark type that I actually wanted to try out for a while, if only for the fact that it gained a lot of traction as of late because of what it gained through Ultra Sun and Moon. And with that, my round 4 pick... A stretch may be, but I decided my round 4 pick to go after Incineroar, so not my first option in terms of getting a dark type, but at the same time though, it did help me in the long run, if only because of the fact that because I got sniped of Hydreigon and Mandibuzz, which were tier 2 Pokemon, I was able to grab Incineroar as a tier 3 pick. With my tier 3 selection, save my tier 2 mod for whatever I decided to pick. Um, in that slot and whatever my team locked I could just go to tier 2 and see what I locked there and adjust accordingly but getting Incineroar may be a bit slow and you see quite of a theme growing like um, Incineroar is a great Pokemon but why do you have Incineroar on a team where you now have three Pokemon at base 60 speed well the main thing with the dark type that I wanted to grab with this team was I want to get a dark type Pokemon with momentum. Hydreigon had U-turn, Mandibuzz had U-turn, I wanted my dark type to have U-turn as well. And while Incineroar's not the first choice that comes to mind, the fact that it does get access to U-turn, slow U-turn at that since it is so slow, I can U-turn out of an unfavorable matchup, go into my Gallade or my AG or my Clefable, Get myself into a better position and force my opponent on the back foot immediately. 
Not only that, being able to get access to stab knockoff, and more importantly, getting access, finally getting intimidate after all this time is just a huge boon. With lowering the attack of any physical threat, you turning out into any of my potential setup mods that I have so far, and make things a little bit easier for them to set up is just a, a very solid thing to have in draft league format. And while and while it does have its flaws, obviously, it does have the low base 60 speed, but that also can be a blessing. It also gives my team an added um, ice resist along with AG. It gives me a psychic immunity. So again, less pressure off of A to slash. And more important, like I mentioned, it does give my team momentum with U-turn. Not to mention stuff like Flare Blitz. It can also be a Sword Stance Sweeper. A bulk up, a bulk up set if I want to go that route. Uh, nasty plot, which is kind of uncommon, but hey, we'll never, we'll never know. We'll see what happens as things go along. But yeah, that's my main reasoning for Incineroar, just to have that nice, strong dart type with access to momentum with U-turn. So maybe a stretch for round four, but at the same time, I'm very happy with what I got uh, out of Incineroar this round. So. With all that said and done, now we move on to round number five, and I figured now is as good a time as any to try to complete my Dragon Fairy Steel Core. Done the one to get some. I want to make sure I got the most out of whatever dragon I get for round number five, and like I said, I really, I really would have preferred to get um Hydreigon with my um as my Dark type, but I got Incineroar. I can't complain about that. But I did get a good dragon nonetheless to complete my Dragon Fairy Steel Core. And while it does share a typing with one of my mons, it still functions very well in the sense of adding more offensive power to my lineup. So with my round 5 pick, I ended up picking up Latios here. So yeah, uh, round 5 and Latios in the same sense as who would have thought. But yeah, just gives me another fast offensive Pokemon and you see a growing theme here, like I have two Pokemon base 60 speed and now I have two Pokemon at base 110. But Latios being able to function as a Choice Scarfer, as a de an offensive defogger, um, which is something I didn't really have. I didn't have hazard removal at this point in the draft. And just having a strong, a strong offensive Pokemon like Latios can be... As I already talked about, choice, um, choice scarf. Excuse me, choice specs is also a possibility. Call mine. And the list goes on and on. I also want to mention that Latios is one of my Z users, so I can fire off like a Z Draco Meteor into a regular Draco Meteor and just completely blow something back if the situation does call for it. But the main reasoning for Latios here, like I said, the speed is helpful. The offensive presence is also very helpful. It eats the pressure off of relying solely on my bulk, if anything, to eat up those strong physical, those strong attacks and whatnot. And yeah, like I said, can't go wrong with it. It also gives me like I can make use of its typing, give me a fire resist, water check, <clears throat> fire, water, grass, electric check, all in one. And its its weaknesses are covered very well by my team: uh, Ghost by Incineroar, Ice by Incineroar, and Age of Slash, uh, Fairy by my Age of Slash. So, uh, so far the team is looking very very nice. It's kind of looking a little bit top heavy, but like I said, with everything that was available, that was allowed, all the higher tier stuff that was allowed in the PCL, you're about to get something like this to happen at some point in the draft. So. Uh, moving on to round round six pick, the main thing I wanted to get with my round six pick was another strong special attacker, if anything, and something with um, some hazard, some offensive hazard support if need be. So my round six pick, I ended up going with Nihilego, another Pokemon which I've never used before. Um, prepping for it has been a little bit of a pain, <coughs> if only for the fact that. It's unpredictable in the fact that whether it can be a special attacking boosting nature or a speed boosting nature. But I think this also helps me out a lot because of the fact yeah, words. So because of the fact that it gives me another stealth rocker, which I only had Clefable before, it gives me toxic spikes, um, which is very, very helpful for my bulk with my Clefable and my Aegis Slash. 
And on top of that, it also gets access to a multitude of sets, whether it be cho another Choice Scarf user. Uh, Rock plus Poison is, is a very potent offensive type being stopped by Steel-types, but I have Mega Gallade for those Steel-types, so it's no big deal in that regard. The coverage, it does get some decent coverage options, Thunderbolt, Grass Knot, um, stuff like that. I already talked about the ability to EV Nihilego, so you get a speed boost every time it knocks an opponent out, so it could be a very solid revenge killer or a late game win con if it does come down to that. But more or less, uh, it's kind of interesting to see how Nihilego plays with this team, if only for the fact that, like I said, never used Nihilego before. I'm very excited to try it out. And it gives me a very important speed tier between 100 and 110, which I otherwise did not have. So, uh, another really thing I should say about Nihilego, other than it's a very solid mon, um, it's low physical defense is made up for the fact that I have the AG and the Clef, so, and an Intimidating Incineroar, so no harm, no foul in that regard. So, <clears throat> so with that out of the way, so move on to my round 7 pick, and with my round 7 pick, I want to, at the very least, have one Pokemon breaking 110 speed, or something faster than 110. So my round, so with round seven, with that in mind, I ended up picking up Crobat. Used Crobat in the past, very, very solid mon, and it may be a little bit weird seeing like like the double typings, uh, pair, um, the double typings like stacking up, but it does help out a bit. Like at least with double psychics, with my double psychic core, at least they're both not weak to dark, and with my double poison typing here. It's nice to have at least one of the two Pokemon not weak to ground. So that is exactly what Crobat is. It's a poison type that gives me... <clears throat> which I mainly will be using for for its flying type because I didn't really have a ground immunity outside of Latios. Which I don't want to go hard into like Moldbreak or Excadrill or whatever the case may be. But... With Crobat, it gives me a fast Mon base 130 speed. It gives me another Defogger. It gives me fast momentum with U turn. Also, nice with Stab Brave Bird. Uh, a fast Taunter and all that stuff. Can sustain stuff with Roost. And more importantly, uh, the main aspect is to have that Defog support. And it can also be a bulky set too. Like Taunt Roost. Also, getting access to stuff like Super Fang, which can help out. With potential toxic spice with Nihilego, which eases up the pressure from my Clefable and my Aegis Slash and the rest of my team for that matter. It appreciates um, bulkier stuff worn down with a combination of toxic spice, super fang, and taunt. So, can't go wrong in that regard, but uh, more or less that is my uh, round 7 pick B in my Crobat. And, and rounding out the last four picks in my draft, there were some key things I wanted to address with the team, like, the main the main flaw with my team uh, as a whole was mainly my speed tiers, like, like ha as I have it right now, like, after Nihilego, I have absolutely nothing between Nihilego and the next fastest Pokemon, which are my base 60s. So, I wanted to alleviate that issue um, as best as I could with the last four picks in my draft. I, I think I got it right with my first, with this next pick here, and that pick ended up being Porygon Z. Now, I will stress that Porygon Z was not my initial pick in this round. I initially had Porygon 2, but... After the draft had ended, we were allowed to make one transaction that would go into effect week number one. After looking over my team and seeing how badly, how big of a gap the speed tier were, was past Nihilego, I decided to drop Porygon 2 for Porygon Z, or in this case, give it a dubious disc, but in any case, <clears throat> Porygon 2 was not a bad Pokemon in this regard. The main thing is, whatever I needed Porygon 2 to do for this team, I already had Clefable doing most of what Porygon 2 was doing, if not better. 
of course being Axe getting a Stealth Rocker and, and more importantly Magic Guard. So pouring on Z gives my team a strong special attacker. It addresses my speed issue, my speed tier issue with a base 90 speed. And more importantly, like I said, just being able to have some sort of offensive breaker aside from Ladio, so I can just fire off a potential choice specs adaptability boosted tri attack from base 135 special attack. It could potentially, it's going to nuke something that doesn't resist normal. That's pretty much all I can say on the matter. And on top of that, it could be a choice specs user, choice scarf, nasty plot, agility, double dance. Whatever Porygon Z's role is to be in the situation I call it for, then yeah, I will bring it in that role. But mainly, Porygon Z is here to alleviate the speed tier issue that I did lack or I didn't have with my prior selection of Porygon 2. So that is the that is my main uh, ideal uh, idea behind getting Porygon Z. Well, dropping Porygon 2 for Porygon Z in this instance. And now to figure out, um, fix up the last, with my last three picks, just trying to fix the main issues and fix the um, stuff I was lacking on my team. The first one, having some sort of, some um, another form of momentum or slow momentum at that and giving me another wall breaker. In general, so after the, um, my Porygon Z pick, round 9, <clears throat> picked up nice and reliable Vicavolt here. So, like you see, my my, my um, options are becoming very, very slow <clears throat> in terms of... In terms of my... Um, like, my team looks rather slow from a speed tier standpoint, but it benefits me a lot. It, well, it, it fits my playstyle of bulky offense, if only for the fact that I can benefit from the slower mons and having something like Vicavolt, a uh, slow mon, base 43 speed, but base 145 special attack, and giving me a slow volt switch on top of getting access to recovery and roost, I will gladly take Vicavolt, especially considering it was tier 5. Like, <clears throat> I have no idea why Vicavolt was tier 5, but I am not complaining one bit about getting Vicavolt on my team. It's one of those, it's one of the Pokemon that you know it can be a problem, but you don't really consider it because, oh, it's so slow, it can't do anything without taking a hit. But if a team is unprepared and I run agility and you don't really have anything to outspeed in the late game, you're going to kind of want to regret that. <laughs> and I also want to note that Vicavolt is my other Z move user to go along with my Latios. So firing off Z Gigavolt Havoc, um, Savage Spin Out, whatever Z move I can, I would decide to run on my Vicavolt. Where the main aspect for Vicavolt is another slow momentum mom with Volt Switch. And of course, having the having the thought or the potential of bringing something like an agility set in the back, while it's maybe slow in terms of an agility set, if I'm able to pull it off, Vigable can claim a lot of a lot of kills if the situation has called for it. So with that out of the way, moving on to the last two picks for my team. Of course, the first one is the fact that I have. No bulky water type, I have no ground type. Wanted to address that with one of my last two picks. Did that with my next pick here, and of course I picked I picked up this the uh <laughs> myself in spirit form. I got myself, I got seismitone. <laughs> nice and reliable water ground type, giving me a water immunity, giving me an electric immunity, um and a catch all check, another stealth rocker. Water Ground is a very, very nice typing, only having that one weakness to grass, and I have like four, res four grass, like five grass resistances on this team. Uh, but more importantly, Side Metal gives me another Stealth Rocker, eases the pressure of me bringing rocks on Clef, uh, gives me a Water Immunity, as I already talked about, and of course, having the option. Um, it may not come up as much, but having the potential to bring a Swift Swim set 
uh, and blow back or catch someone off guard with Swift Swim with a Rain Dance Seismitoad set can be pretty fun to try out. Uh, I did it once in the past in the IBL. It was a lot of fun. I almost won that game, but <clears throat> having the option at my disposal, just very, very solid overall, and just having another blanket check to some physical threats, some special attackers, just very, very nice to have. And with my last pick, just trying to speed this up a little bit because we're already over 30 minutes, um, with my last pick, the one thing I didn't have <clears throat> to complete this draft was I had no grass type. And while it's not really common that I... And with the, the theme with me, at the very least, with my team, it's the fact that I don't really have a... I don't really, like, have grass... Uh, grass Ground resist. Or whatever ground resist I get, I never bring it. So, I wanted to address that. My last... Um, my last round is a grass type, and not the grass type you normally see in draft league format. And I'll explain my reasoning why I picked this mon when I did. Well, picked my, this mon in general was the last round. So, it's an unconventional grass type, but I feel like this grass type has a lot of uses in terms of what it gained. And I'll explain what it has over another grass type, which was also available. But just to break the ice here, my last round pick ended up being a Blossom. I kid you not, this is not a mean pick by any stretch of the imagination. I legitimately drafted Blossom with my last pick. And with some of you probably wondering why, um, I, know so, I know especially with, I forgot who it was, who was like, why did you pick Blossom when something like Tangela was still available? There's two reasons why I went Blossom over Tangela. Talang Talangela. Tangela is a solid mon. I will give it that. The main thing with Tangela is the fact that it needs Eevee Light to maintain its solid bulk. I did not want to be restricted to bringing Eevee Light on a single Pokemon. And the other th reason why I have drafted Blossom over Tangela comes in two words. And those two words are Strength Sap. This is a solid ground resist. Especially considering that most of the ground type Pokemon are physical. I can click Strength Sap, lower their attack, and get health back equal to that Mon's attack stat. Meaning I can essentially get my Balas in the full after taking a hit. Oh! Not to mention the fact that it does get access to Quiver Dance. And unlike Tangela, it can't Quiver Dance and it has crap special defense. And they're both base 50 speed. Having a ground resist that also can double as a potential bulky setup sweeper is another boon with Blossom. Having Quiver Dance, having Giga Drain, not to mention. While Lilligant does exist in terms of Quiverdance grass type users, the one thing that Blossom has that Lilligant does not have is coverage. Lilligant is stuck to using Hidden Power, Nature Power with Terrain Support, or if it's a Z user, Z Hyper Beam for coverage. Blossom is not limited to that. While its options aren't that huge outside of Hidden Power, it does get access to Sludge Bomb, it can get Moon Blast, <clears throat> um, well just, just those main two coverage options. It's being able to hit other grass types with a move that's not hidden power is great. Not to mention, it also has access, it still has access to stuff like Sleep Powder, Stun Spore, all that stuff. So. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of utility in one Mon. Blossom's not a Pokemon that you think about using about at all in the draft in draft league format. Some people have tried it, some people have had success with it, but not. It's not a Pokemon that strikes fear into the hearts of competitive players, but considering that I need a ground resist, and considering what Blossom gets and what it offers my team. 
I could not pass up Blossom in that role. So, with that all said and done, and me trying my best not to overhype Blossom, <laughs> that is my draft, as you see on your screen. Just to quickly recap, we have a Clefable, Nihilego, Incineroar, Crobat, Seismitoad, Vicavolt, Mega Gallade, Aegislash, Latios, Porygon Z, and Blossom. Uh, with my Z users being Latios and Vicavolt, I can use any Z move on those two Pokemon, obviously, with the exception of Omni boosting, Z evasion moves, boosting moves, etc., etc. But with that all out of the way, I am going to end it there. Because I've gone on for a lot longer than I had hoped <laughs> at the end there. But then again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this draft recap, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And that's going to be it from me, guys. This is So until week one of the PCL starts up for season number two, this is Tone signing out for now. Peace out.